Hello and welcome to our webinar, Be Your Best Self in 2021, Meets to Help You Find Peace, Comfort, and Inspiration. I'm Donna Seaman, editor of Adult Books at Booklist. Before we begin, I'd like to go over some technical details. The audience is in listen-only mode, but we welcome any questions you may have. On the bottom of your screen is a toolbar with a section for Q&A. If you have a question or need technical assistance, simply click Q&A and type your message into the bar, at, into the box that appears. We will do our best to respond to all tech-related questions and we'll pass along all other questions to today's panelists so they can follow up with you after the webinar. Links to today's slides and the title list were included in the reminder email you received um, from Zoom an hour ago. To download them, please open that email, scroll to the bottom, and click on the links located there. You can also download these materials at any time by copying the URLs on this screen into your web browser. I'm so glad that you've all joined us for this unique program. This webinar came out of a conversation we had about how radically the pandemic is changing our lives and how so many people are finding solace and guidance and escape in books. Booklist ran a Notes from the Field column by Stephen Spasato at Chicago Public Library titled Reading in a Time of Crisis, which you can find on this website. Steve writes, first, there is an urge to face crises head on and read for understanding. Secondly, readers are seeking ways to cope with the stress. Today, you will find readers advisory suggestions for both approaches as our wonderfully knowledgeable and caring presenters talk about books gathered in such useful categories as gentle reads, a healthy state of mind, inspiring lives, and escapism and humor. They have also made everything covered in this presentation available in the Edelweiss catalog listed on this slide. And who are these smart and insightful book lovers? The Library Love Fest team at HarperCollins Publishers, of course. We will have the pleasure of hearing from Virginia Stanley. Virginia is the Director of Library Marketing at HarperCollins. She was included in the Library Journal's inaugural Movers and Shakers edition, being called a bridge builder because of her outreach to libraries across the country and for including libraries on author tours as often as possible. Virginia enjoys coming of age books, Broadway shows, and any song sung by Cher. Chris Connolly is the marketing associate of, associate of the library marketing team at HarperCollins. Hailing from Indiana, Chris spends his free time reading science fiction and wandering New York City parks. And Lainey Mays is the marketing coordinator of the library marketing team at HarperCollins. Originally from Mississippi, her hobbies include visiting museums in the city and listening to or creating podcasts. Lainey's favorite book is Anne of Green Gables, and it's all because of a librarian. Welcome, Virginia, Chris, and Lainey. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Thank you so much for uh, taking uh, time to listen to us talk about books. And thank you, Donna and Grace at Booklist for the opportunity to bring these uh, very different reads um, to you all today. So thank you for the introduction. And yes, we are going to talk about uh, books that address a lot of different things. We, uh, 2020 has been a heck of a year and, um, and there's, uh, there's a lot, there's been a lot to grapple with. And so we thought that we would pull together some books that are a combination of prescriptive and um, sort of escapist and maybe a little bit of everything for everybody, we hope. So uh, without further ado, we'll just get going. And um, I think we're gonna disappear. Chris Lane, you wanna say hi before we go bye-bye? Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, we're so excited to talk about these books. This is something kind of new and different for us, and I think we've found it just as helpful as you likely will. And uh, yeah, we can't wait to talk about these books. Yeah, and uh, we hope everyone safety, health, and some joy this year. Yeah, for sure. So with that, we'll uh, we'll get started. We'll see you at the end. Thank you. Next slide. Oh, so Lainey, you want to talk about this slide? 
Yes. So we, you've seen this at the beginning, but we, on the title list, that is the Excel grid that you have at the very top, it's on there as well. But this is the link to download the Edelweiss catalog. If you would rather take notes there instead of an Excel grid, or if we talk about behind the book pieces, this is where you're going to find it. So those books are all in this catalog for you. And if you're typing furiously, it's on the next slide too. You can go to the next one. Now you've probably all known and you'll seen our social media. So we're not going to spend tons of time on the housekeeping so we don't, you know, rush through all these books as, as like maniacs. But if you go to Library Love Fest, this is where you'll find all of this information, stuff about ALA and how to get galleys and all that stuff. So um, do visit us there and always email us because we're around. God knows. Next. Once again, whitelisting. Uh, checking out door to door, our weekly Facebook Live, getting information on podcasts and getting uh, newsletters, all of that. Library Love Fest, one stop shopping, and a pastrami sandwich. I don't know. No, you can't get a pastrami sandwich on my librarylovefest.com. You cannot. Keep going. Let's go. Christopher, tell yeah. them. Sure. Well, I, again, we know programming is so important for you and your patrons, uh, and we're here to help. You can go to our blog, Library Love Fest, where everything sits, and click on virtual author events for some tips and info. And then also just feel free to email us. Uh, you'll have our contact info, and we can help set up some virtual visits, which should be the norm at least through you know the end of summer. So let us know, and we'll help. Lainey? We have audio e-galleys available on, auto, on Edelweiss and NetGalley. Some of the titles, um, these are the new ones for January. So when you go to download your ebook, but you would prefer an e, uh, audio e-galley, they are available for you. So we're very excited for this program and we've gotten a lot of great response. So I hope you uh, dip in. Like me again. <laughs> me again. Um, we're doing author Instagram takeovers as part of our door-to-door -door program. So uh, most notably, there's some great names here, uh, including Neil Gaiman and Nancy Pearl. But tomorrow, Molly Greeley is taking over, author of The Heiress. So you can go to our feed, Harper Library, and see posts from Molly all day. It's going to be exciting. Okay. And as I mentioned before, uh, we do a weekly video series Typically, we're interviewing authors, sometimes it's just the three of us talking about books, but um, it's mostly uh, us talking to authors, sometimes one, sometimes two. Uh, once a week on Tuesdays, uh, we just had um, Willie Watton and uh, Andrew Graff on, and it was just wonderful. All of these are archived on Facebook, but also on Library Love Fest on our YouTube channel. So they're really terrific, and we hope that you can join us because we encourage librarians to um, you know, join in the conversation, type in a question and we'll ask, we'll answer it. Uh, the authors will answer it. We'll send you a galley. So do come to the party, come to our door. This is, we have interviewed 68 authors, which is crazy. And we have over 330 views. So it's amazing. And we're really proud of this and we're thrilled. I mean, these are, you know, these authors have been absolutely amazing and really just, these are very heartfelt and sort of fun and just, you know, real conversational interviews with these authors, Willie Blotton sang the other day and sometimes they'll do a, a very, very small reading like a paragraph or two just to give you a sense of the book. It's great. So we hope you can join us. Those are on Tuesdays at two o'clock, Facebook Live, Library Love Fest. I should note we have 330,000 views. So it's a lot, that's been great. Um, what did I, did I say 330? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. I love you for that. 330,000 views. And your defense, just... we also had 330, but they were included. In <laughs> right. That was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We pivoted to this back in, you know, in March, April, when everything went upside down. And it's been, we're not going to stop this. Even when the world writes itself, we're going to continue this because it's a wonderful way to, to connect books and authors and with librarians. So it's, it's been a gift. Podcast. So as you heard in my intro, I love podcasts so much. And one of the joys is putting ours together. So you can call us. We have a voicemail. So that's exciting. You could hear yourself on the show. Um, anywhere you get podcasts, go listen. But we wanted to highlight our latest episode with Russell Banks. Um, he was on Door to Door. And so we took some of that conversation with Nancy Pearl because she came on to talk to him 
and we put it on the podcast. So it's just 20 minutes, a clip, a clip from the show, and then you can go watch the show in person. But it's a really, I was listening to an old episode last night. I just put it on and it really takes you to a place where you can envision everything that's happening. Um, and just a reminder that Russell Banks Library Reads votes are due February 1st. And so that's one of the reasons we wanted to highlight this amazing book on the last episode. And if you haven't read Foregone, I urge you to read it. It is it's it's just so moving and so powerful about a man at the end of his life looking back and questioning what is memory and what is real and it is great love it it's called foregone russell banks okay and we do have a huge book buzz two hours coming february 10th on crowdcast so we're going to be giving you all a preview of summer 2021 titles uh, on, via Crowdcast, again, two hours, and just RSVP, you can reserve your spot there on that bit.ly link below, or if you just look up Library Love Fest on Crowdcast, you can follow us and get details there. Uh, so do please join us, that'll be a good time. Midwinter is coming. Um, we're very excited to be at ALA Midwinter Virtual. And uh, on our blog, it's pinned to the top, everything we have going on. We have some really great programs which we may talk about a little bit later in the show and you'll be able to see an indication if it's at ALA Midwinter, but we're also gonna be in the booth. So go check out our times and you come chat with us. We'd love to see you. Yeah. Okay, and now the books. So we've broken these up into categories and the first category is productivity. Next slide, please. Okay, and I'm gonna start us off with Flex by Annie Auerbach. So this is a very practical, handy guide to working at home from one of the foremost advocates for this. So Annie is a brand consultant and strategist who's worked with companies like PepsiCo and Nike and Google. And she's long advocated for flex working, which means flexible hours, flexible deadlines, flexible location. Uh, and she argues that this will, of course, one, allow for more productivity, happier employees, and better work-life balance. And this is a practical guide more focused for women workers who, uh, you know, uh, as we know, shoulder a lot of the work at home, the emotional labor, child care, et cetera. And this is a very practical guide for women uh, and employers to set up workers for success when working from home and how to do that. Um, as Library Journal says, it's an informative, formative, practical, and timely. This title is recommended for working women and contains sound advice about the effective use of flex in the workplace and at home. Um, really surprising uh, notes and tips for this, but again, it's all very easily implemented. And I think just what we need. And this contains a updated forward by Annie that speaks directly to post-COVID life. So we're really excited. This will be a very handy guide for a lot of people. So that's Flex coming in February. Okay, The New Normal by Dr. Jennifer Ashton. So Jennifer Ashton is ABC's chief medical correspondent. You've probably seen something or another <coughs> on the updates for what's been going on because she's been reporting about coronavirus daily and helping Americans comprehend this urgency for what, what are we gonna do and how are we gonna move on? And in March of 2020, uh, me, like most people, thought, oh, I'll be home for two weeks and maybe it'll be fine. But now, you know, how many months later we're all um, at home still? And so we've all said this, the new normal, what does that look like? We're in a new normal and this book is going to help you figure that out. So we're learning that the new normal is not just about wearing masks and standing six feet apart after all of this. You have to recognize that we have to stay safe and sane in a world where we know nothing about what's going on and at any point in time it could change. So this is just a practical guide that's going to, it's really straightforward, accessible, there's strategies in it. Um, she's going to empower you to make the really hard decisions that you have about how, how are you going to socialize? How are you going to shop for food or see doctors or find a new normal? And when all this is over, it's a really holistic roadmap. But I do want to point out that, you know, we do have these vaccines coming, which is really wonderful, but that's not necessarily going to solve all of our problems. And so the editor and I were talking about this book and he was saying that, you know, you write this book, A, before all of the vaccines are coming. So you don't really know this, but you're writing this book to be something that lives for a long time and it's not gonna be irrelevant 
or and it's really fresh regardless of what we're going through and very timely and wellness is kind of this buzzword that we have a lot but now it's kind of not a luxury we kind of have to figure out how we're going to be well in this world so the new normal is going to be a really powerful book um, and that's by dr jennifer ash Okay, Remote Inc. by Robert Posen and Alexandra Samuel. This is a great pairing by two extremely productive, effective people, highly successful, who are very different. So Robert teaches at the MIT Sloan School of Management and uh, is the author of Extreme Productivity. Uh, and then Alexandra Samuel is a tech speaker and data journalist who's worked from home for most of her 25 year career. And they both bring different things to the table here, but they've put their heads together to come up with an approach to completely rethink Work, remote working. Uh, and what they're doing is they're kind of taking case studies from highly successful work from home people and how to kind of reframe your own relationship with working from home. It's not just taking what you did in the office and then doing it at home. It's thinking of yourself as almost like an entrepreneur, a business of one, where what you're doing is taking that approach, that entrepreneurial approach, and translating it into habits that focuses on goals and results, not like a nine to five schedule how to treat your managers, kind of like valued clients, how to wow them, uh, which will again in turn increase your productivity and lack in and kind of reduce burnout. Uh, and then also just, you know, practical stuff for information overload, how to approach online meetings, which we know we all deal with so extensively now, uh, and how to build online relationships with colleagues, again, to help prevent burnout and how to increase productivity. It's a very handy, well-researched guide by two people at the forefront of um, this discipline. And we're really excited to share it with you. It's coming in April. So that's Remote Inc. Anxiety at work. Uh, everyone somewhere has had anxiety at work, but not to mention what we're all going through now. We have added anxieties. Um, and if you've ever dreaded a Sunday night or have a pit in your stomach for the next work week, um, this book is perfect. It's really empathetic and wise um, from two really, um, really great specialists who know exactly what they're talking about. So Chester Elton and Adrian Gostick are the authors of the New York Times uh, and number one US Today, USA Today bestseller, um, All In, The Carrot Principle and Leading with Gratitude. And their books have been translated into more than 30 languages, sold more than 1.5 million copies, and they have founded The Culture Works, a global training company. So they are pros at training how to have a more effective workplace. And an Anxiety at Work builds on their vast knowledge and experience working with the leadership teams of some of the world's most successful organizations. And they offer those really effective strategies that all of those companies put in place to make a workplace better. And so they do it from the supervisor's point of view and the employee. So you don't just have a one or the other it's really holistic and it they cover topics such as weather uncertainty balance overload building confidence strengthening social bonds etc um, and there's so many great quotes for the spoken people writing in a lot of uh, doctors and people on the forefront of um, making a really calm workplace and so this is uh, something I think everyone will need anxiety at work okay and a couple of books that, um, you know, could come in handy if you have kids around the house and everybody's getting a little Zoom screen crazy. Uh, these are two books by Ainsley Arment, who is the founder of Wild and Free. It's a homeschooling community. And she says, just nature, literature, and a community of patient mamas is all you need to, uh, you don't need Google Classroom. So uh, this, um, so I have two books here. One is, um, one is uh, Wild and Free Nature, and one is uh, Wild and Free Book Club. And um, there's, a, there's a great New York Times article on the Edelweiss page for uh, Wild and Free Nature. And it kind of talks about um, how homeschoolers feel sort of misunderstood. Uh, people assume they're just sort of like, you know, anti-technologists and all that sort of stuff and, and, um, and hippies. And this is really, this is, re this is not that. This is, there, it's worlds apart homeschooling um, and remote schooling because um, what Ainsley Arment is saying is that um, it's, it, she's connecting and supporting parents who educate their children at home. And uh, their approach is less about replicating the classroom at home and more about awakening a desire to learn in the natural environment from exploring nature 
and leaning into literature. And she's been doing this for 10 years and she knows of what she speaks. So uh, uh, Wild and Free Nature is, um, is the companion to the Wild and Free series. It's a resource book of crafts and activities and essays that really help get kids and families outside to experience nature that's all around us. There's step-by-step -step color photos to show you how to do the activities, essays on the importance of nature in a child's life. Um, it's just beautifully designed and um, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful, uh, a valuable tool really for caregivers and, and, um, and educators and parents. Um, and at this time more than ever, and uh, you know, she's got a, she's got a host of podcasts with over a million downloads and she's just, she's just so entrenched in this world. Um, Lainey, there, are there slides for this one or the next one? I don't remember. Oh, there yeah. are, are there spreads? I think yeah, the they might be, but yeah. they're on Edelweiss. So where, as I say, you can read this New York Times article, but they're absolutely beautiful. And um, the book club is super cool. Uh, as well, because it's really um, a celebration of children's books, classics and modern books. And, and the goal is to equip parents, teachers and caregivers to engage with the joy of reading and turn these kids into lifelong readers. So it does this by providing parents with fully formed uh, plans, which can be customized based on the group of kids and its games and activities, food and drink ideas, ideas, um, parent tested discussion questions. So, um, you know, whether you're inside or you're outside, there's, uh, there are activities uh, based again on books and based on nature. And it's really so lovely. It's just a wonderful thing. And now more than ever, when parents and caregivers are looking for something different to engage the, the kids who are home, um, this is something that you need to check out. This is the whole Wild and Free series, but the book club and nature are exceptional. And then we have a few more titles that we can't get to because there are so many, but all of these are in the Edelweiss catalog that Lainey has created. So additional titles that we would, uh, we think are very important and need to check out. And ISBNs are there. And so on to Gentle Reads. Okay, and the first book up is Raft of Stars by Andrew J. Graff. This is a really warm-hearted, stunning debut. It's our lead read pick for winter 2021, which is a sales program where the sales staff at HarperCollins votes on one title each season. We think has you know big chances for both critical and commercial success. And this really swept through the sales staff. This is the, the choice for winter and for good reason. This is a modern day classic that can also appeal to uh, some YA readers, and it follows two young boys, 10-year-olds in northern Wisconsin. They think they've committed a horrible crime, so they venture into these north woods of Wisconsin. They build a raft, and they're going to see uh, one of these children's dads. It's fish and bread. But little do they know there's a looming threat of this deadly gorge, and you follow these two kids as they kind of learn more about themselves in the vast wild of nature, and then for adults who are scrambling to track them down. Again, it's warm, it feels, it's the characters are given such heart and such depth. Um, but we actually had Andrew on Door to Door, the program we mentioned, and as he said, he likes to take care of readers, he likes to feel taken care of. And this is a warm, unforgettable modern day classic that we all just adore so deeply uh, with characters who really will steal your heart. Uh, as Nicholas Butler, author of Little Faith says, in ruggedly beautiful prose and with a deep affection for his damaged but always lovable characters, Graf delivers a novel with real heart and soul. Uh, we just adore this author and this novel, and we think you will too. It's just for about every reader we can think of. And that's coming March 23rd. Nobody, Somebody, Anybody by Kelly McClory. Uh, that cover always makes me smile when I see it. Um, so this is a very moving and darkly comedic debut. Um, you are going to laugh and uh, just be pulled into this character right away. This is based, there's a fun backstory because the author um, spent some of her own time housekeeping at a yacht club in Massachusetts um, in her past. And so she wanted to explore all of the solitude that she found with this job and see um, how that kind of can change and alter your mind and your state of mind. Um, which I think we all know a little bit about solitude right now. And so in this story, she talks about Amy Harney, 
who's a chambermaid and, for a summer. And then on August 25th, she's gonna take an exam to become EMT. This is her third time. It's a little hard. She's a little busy cleaning rooms all day and you know, watching people out the window and watching TV instead of cleaning. And then when she gets home, she's very busy trying to open her landlord's mail to see his letters from his Ukrainian fiance before she gets her visa. You know, she's very busy. She can't study all the time. Um, and so as she decides that to get her life together, she's desperate and she's gonna con 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 concoct her own placebo program. She's gonna self-prescribe her regimen so she can get on top of things and succeed. And just, it all unravels from there and it, it explores these really fun corners of a woman's inner world and how she's gonna get out of it, the self-loathing she has or delusions that she has. Um, but you're gonna laugh all the way through it not at her, but with her because she gets into some funny things. If you're a fan of Where'd You Go Bernadette or uh, Mostly Dead Things, perfect for you. And just quickly, Chris and Arnett wrote Mostly Dead Things, said, this book forces us to examine the desperately human, utterly embarrassing ways that people can F up and gives us permission to revel in it. Compulsively readable, as spectacular, and Kelly McClory is a dynamo. So very fun read. Nobody, somebody, everybody. Yes, please. Okay, The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. This is a debut, very charming book about uh, the power of books to transform lives. Um, this is about um, an immigrant uh, young girl in London who works part-time at a library and she finds a book list in the back of a copy of To Kill a Mockingbird. Her widowed grandfather is worried about her solitude and their lack of connection. And when she shows him the reading list, it becomes a lifeline for each of them, reconnecting to the world and to each other. This, uh, this is filled with references to beloved books like Rebecca and Little Women, The Kite Runner, Beloved, Pride and Prejudice, A Suitable Boy, which by the way, if you get a chance to see that series, A Suitable Boy, it's so good. Um, and uh, The Life of Pi. It's a love letter to some of our most beloved books. The author herself is a former book editor, so she has a great feel for pacing. And there's a great twist at the end about where the list came from, the list that's in the back of the book. Um, and so, uh, as I say, it's a Valentine for book lovers, this heartfelt story. It's a great um, sort of own, read, own voices read, a great diversity, as I said, it's set in multicultural London um, neighborhood of Ealing, and it's the celebration of the British Indian community by the author who was raised there. And um, one other thing you should note is that the author will be speaking at ALA, at the, one of the last programs. Um, it's called Forget Your Troubles. So HarperCollins, Macmillan and Workman have bonded together and they're each bringing an author to uh, talk about their books. Another sort of something like this, you know, sort of let's, let's just, you know, have some light good, feel good reads. Um, and so that panel is gonna take place on Monday, January 25th from four o'clock to five o'clock. And then uh, after the authors speak, uh, Workman, Harper Collins and Macmillan will all um, talk about it to do a mini book buzz. So you will love this book, I promise. And then you'll wanna hear about all the other books that we'll be talking about. And she's absolutely lovely. I just spoke with her the other day and super, super, super excited about this story. So if you love Susan Wiggs, The Lost and Found Bookshop, this is the kind of book that you're gonna love. And then All the Children Are Home by Patrie Francis. Um, uh, All the Children Are Home is a family story about overcoming hardship and particularly about resilient women, uh, children who are conquering obstacles when odds are stacked against them. Um, this is by the author of the, uh, the Orphans at Race Point, which was a huge bestseller. Um, she's a three-time Pushcart nominee. Um, Orphans at Race Point received two star reviews. Um, this is... Um, this is a really, really interesting book. I really enjoyed reading this book. It's set in the 50s and the 60s, and it's set in Massachusetts. And it follows this family, this husband and wife, they're, they're Dahlia and Louie. They're foster parents. They're, they're long-term foster children. They have um, uh, Jimmy, Zadie, and John. And this is, uh, this is about um, this child that is presented to them, um, a six-year-old indigenous girl um, that uh, comes with, a lot of, uh, for her six years on this earth, she has um, a lot of history and it's not good. Um, and so you get this, and they, they, they really don't want to bring her in. The mother doesn't want to bring her in. Um, she's, they're raising these three children and um, the social worker begs them to take this young girl who's been abused 
and they just can't say no. So six-year-old Agnes Juniper arrives with no knowledge of her own heritage, which is Native American. She doesn't know anything about herself. She only knows that she's got this little box of trinkets given to her by her mother and these sort of dreamlike memories of her sister. Um, and it, it's so sad, and it, but it's so beautiful because the mother has a whole history too. And there's a reason why she doesn't want a girl. She doesn't want this little, she doesn't want this little kid, but she can't, she can't not take her. Um, she doesn't want a newborn. She doesn't want delinquents. She doesn't want girls, but she takes this child in. And, um, and it's the, the effect of this child on the rest of the family. And it's really beautiful, and really powerful. Um, it's sort of in the vein of ask again, yes. Um, and it follows them through a, a, a decade of you know, triumph and heartbreak. Um, and the, um, the, the inspiration for the book comes from Patrick Francis's late husband who was a Native American foster child himself. So very excited about this beautiful book, All the Children in Their Home by Patrick Francis. Anne of Manhattan by Bryna Starler. So as you know, I am a big Anne of Green Gables fan. And this is a love letter to all of those fans. Or if you are not a fan, you can discover some great characters with a great rom-com. So this is a rom-com retelling of Anne of Green Gables. It's set in New York City. Um, it all started when the editor put out this call on Twitter, just a tweet that was like, hear me out, Anne Gilbert, gotta have a retelling and Brino wrote and said I can do that <laughs> and this is what we have and it's so lovely and just so wonderful to go back to these characters that feel like home if you know them but it does stand alone as just a great like friends I mean enemies to friends to lovers uh rom-com in the same way and we um just we released the cover actually on our blog and we have an excerpt from the story and a letter from Bryna as well. So I put that link in there for you all to check out because it is such a fun read. So in the story, we have Anne who grew up on Long, on Long Island. She, you know, same backstory. Um, she was taken in and adopted. She's on her way to Manhattan to live with Diana. They're going to go to grad school. And lo and behold, Gilbert shows up after five years of not seeing him. They had a moment a while back, but don't know where they stand. Of course, he's her enemy in all things school and she's gonna uh, win everything but now they're put with the same uh, professor for their thesis and they have to see if they who's gonna out bet each other or if they might fall in love um, but what I really enjoyed is I think that she does a really great job exploring a lot of Anne's uh, unresolved feelings from being a adopted child and that background which I think was really something special that Bryna added to this and um, you know, it's not in the same place. It's not in Canada, but you do get that Green, Green Gables feel and it, it really is uh, a delight to go back to. So Anne Green Gables, I'm sorry, Anne of Manhattan, Bryna Starler. These are just more gentle reads that we've talked about extensively. We've actually had each of these authors on our door-to-door -door program and they each will warm your heart, entertain you and uh, just a great, great companion as you pass the time home or, well, maybe at work if you're allowed to read at work. So uh, we do recommend you check these out and info on these books is on uh, the resource we provided. So we'll go on to a healthy state of mind. And the first book I think uh, may surprise you for this category, but I, I think it's actually perfect, which is Read Dangerously by Zara Nafisi, who you'll know from the New York Times bestselling Reading Lolita in Tehran. Uh, which sold over a million copies. And Azar is one of the most foremost reading advocates. She's often talked about her time as a you know, avid reader growing up in the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, and her father who uh, actually encouraged her to read. And this is a um, reading guide where, uh, and it's basically Azar's answer to the age of disinformation, uh, but it's also an, you know, and she's advocating talking to the other side through the power of literature. So whether it's James Baldwin or Zora Neale Hurston or Margaret Atwood, Salman Rushdie, what this is, is Azar, you know, taking us through their powerful works and helping us kind of understand their importance in the time we are living now, uh, what they say about, you know, totalitarianism, um, you know, fractured, you know, countries and, and social strife, what we can use and how we can use these powerful works 
to really reach the other side uh, and fight again all these you know powerful forces that we're facing uh, as a country, as a nation, as a world. So um, really powerful stuff. And it's structured as a series of letters to her father, who I mentioned again, was just uh, an incredible person and, and an influential person in her life. So this is coming in August. Uh, very excited about this book. I think it'll be really big. So that's Read Dangerously by Zara Nafisi. You Will Get Through This Night by Daniel Howell. Daniel Howell, uh, in his first book that he uh, wrote was called The Amazing Book is Not on Fire, which he co-wrote he co with his best friend, Phil Esther. And that was a number one New York Times bestseller, as was the follow-up, Dan and Phil Go Outside. Those books were published by Penguin Random House's Kids Division, and they established the readership. But the readership is older now, as is Dan, and this book is perfect for those fans. Anxiety is the number one mental health issue in America intensified by the current pandemic and the fears it brings. This book offers comfort, hope, and practical advice, specifically geared to a Gen Z audience. Um, he, this author is a YouTube sensation. Um, he's broken this book up into three chapters for each stage of the journey. Uh, this night, which is how to get through your toughest moments and be prepared to face anything. Tomorrow, small steps to change your thoughts and actions with a big impact on your life. And the days after, help to look after yourself in the long term and not just survive, but thrive. It includes diet and sleep and meditation. Um, it is, uh, he uh, consults with a professional psychologist um, and offers tools to understand one mind, uh, one's mind. I just wanna show a quick, quick video and uh, we'll move on, but this is really quite personal and quite powerful. Grace, can you show the video? Mental health is something we all have. Whether you know you're going through a tough time or feel like you're fine, it's always there. Invisible, but influencing what you feel, how you react. Sometimes it can feel like a fog you're powerless to navigate through, but that's not true. You can be your own light. It's not something to be cured. There isn't one solution. But if we understand our minds, we can communicate with our consciousness and put ourselves back in control so we can really live. So the next day, you know what steps to take to make a change. And you can look after yourself the days after that. We're on this journey for a long time and we owe it to ourselves to not just survive, but thrive. I can do it, and so can you. You will get through this night. So that is You Will Get Through This Night by Daniel Howell. Uh, and that is, um, as I say, it's a very personal and practical mental health guide. Next. And just some more books that we have that we hope that you'll look up uh, at the end of the presentation. Again, all on the uh, handout. Uh, uplifting stories. Yes. So I have two uplifting stories for you. And these are two books that just make my heart swell so much. So we have The 100 Years of Lenny and Margo by Marianne Cronin. This is a <laughs> beautiful novel. It's about two, two women. One is 17 and one is 83. So Lenny is 17 and she lives in the Glasgow Princess Royal Hospital in the May Ward. So she is... Um, been told supposedly that she is dying and she's been there for a while um she's gone through her ups and downs with her family and that relationship but she's a very um I guess precocious is a good word she takes a lot of things into her own hand she's going to make the most of this life and so she befriends a lot of fun characters in this hospital including my favorite father Arthur who's the chaplain there and she he does not need her help, but she's going to give it to him no matter what and makes for some really funny moments. But Lenny also makes friends with Margot. And Margot is 83. She's in the 80s art group and Lenny doesn't get in, along with any of her friends. They all seem like they don't really have this bigger picture that she's looking for. So she decides she's going to go to the over 80s art group and Lenny and Margot become unlikely friends. And they decide that between them, they have a hundred years of experience. So they're going to do an art project for uh, an art piece for every year. 
And so it goes back and forth in time between these two women's lives and the 100 years that they share. And it's so, so beautiful. And it reads like a cinematic masterpiece. Um, and I can say that the film rights have been bought and are in production. So we really, we really hope that this becomes one. But, you know, for, for fans of like Fault in Your Stars, or it reminds me a lot of, um, it's kind of a funny story, just really strong characters going through a lot in life, but also looking for hope and what that hope is. And I'm not going to lie, it is a tearjerker. I feel like I have to tell you this, but you welcome it. And it is so hopeful and beautiful that you don't mind that at all. So do yourself a favor and I'm, and pick this book up. I'm very uh, jealous that you get to read it for the first time. So that's 100 years of Lady Margot. And then How Lucky by Will Leach. So much joy in this book. I love this book so, so much. So in this book, we have, this is Will's, uh, he's a sports writer, a famous sports writer, but he, this is his fiction debut. Um, and it's kind of in the vein of The Curious Incident, The Dog in the Nighttime, or um, I know Virginia loves Jenny Moon. That's kind of what it made me think of. Um, and in this story, we have Daniel who lives in Athens, Georgia, and he is, uh, has a disability. He has spinal muscular atrophy um, all through his life. And recently he's gone through something. So he's in a wheelchair, but also now he cannot speak. And with that comes a lot of limitations on his life. But with all of those limitations, he is so, so strong. And he considers himself a pretty lucky guy. He's got great friends, lives in a house that he feels comfortable in. He has a job that he um, is kind of veiled with. He speaks to customers online at an, air, an airline when they complain, so they can't see him. And they usually treat him just like they would treat anyone, which is usually not very good. But <laughs> Daniel appreciates that because he feels more normal. Um, and he's just a really... Uh, positive guy for everything that's going on but when he sees a girl that he usually sees on walks in front of his house he sees her get in someone's car and he thinks she might have been kidnapped after some news comes out in town he decides he's going to figure this out and so kind of an unlikely person to solve a mystery but it's really fun and there is a mystery in there as well um and we just got this amazing kevin wilson quote for it um which is so beautiful heartened by the depth of his writing I am telling you, it brings so much joy, this book. And you can hear Will speak himself because he has a great backstory for this as well. His, he knows a friend of his family um, has this disease. And so he writes from a lot of knowledge in that and talking to a lot of people who have it. Um, so midwinter, we're having a program called Representing, the importance of writing diverse characters. And you can see that on demand, but if you want more information, go to our blog and, and that link is there for you. That's how lucky. Okay, next up we have a range of inspiring lives, inspiring people, um, and I'm going to start with Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen by Dr. Inger Burnett Ziegler, uh, who is a licensed clinical psychologist and professor who in this book is tackling the image of the strong black woman and what that really means. Um, what she says is essentially that, you know, black women have endured a lot, whether it's abuse, violence, trauma, abandonment, and often what they return to is the mask of being a strong black woman, of, of keeping that all in, where, you know, within the community, uh, mental health is, you know, seeking out, uh, seeking out help is just not a normal thing. And using her own personal story dealing with depression and anxiety, uh, Dr. Burnett Ziegler, you know, is advocating for retaking the, the, the image and the, and the statement of I am a strong black woman and reusing it to really advocate for, you know, we need to shed the shield, we need to open ourselves up and find our strength through, again, facing, dealing, grappling and healing from all this trauma. So a really important, I think, in a lot of ways, groundbreaking book that uses real research and Dr. Burnett Ziegler's uh, own expertise to really tackle a tough topic, do it with a lot of poise and uh, with a lot of hope. Uh, so this is coming June 29th, that nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Okay, little and often. Uh, this is uh, this is a memoir. This is by Trent Presler. Um, this is um, this is a really this is very H is for Hawk and shop class as Soulcraft. Um, this is about a winemaker and an artisan boat builder who recalls his complicated relationship with his estranged father. Um, 
So Trent Presler is the CEO of a successful winery, and he's, uh, he's also um, a gay man who um, hadn't talked to his father in 14 years. Um, they had their issues when, when his dad called to say he was dying of cancer, and he asked them to return to the family's ranch uh, for Thanksgiving uh, back out in South Dakota. He went, and it was the last time they saw each other. Um, and, but his father uh, left him a, a very strange inheritance, his toolbox. And he was thinking about what his father had said about tackling a difficult task. And he decided to take on two hard projects, approaching them little and often. Uh, and these projects were building a boat and unpacking his grief. So as he learns the meditative rituals of woodworking, he finds peace through a new life lived in communion with nature and a new appreciation of his father. There's a wonderful video on Edelweiss uh, where you really get to see him. He's got, uh, um, you see how he, he it's, it's so beautiful to watch him work with wood. And it's very, it seems very, um, I don't know, he's very at peace and very at one with what he's doing. It's, 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 it's sort of mesmerizing in a way. And he's also, as they say, this, you know, this very successful uh, CEO of, of this uh, um, winery. In fact, the Obamas used his red for their inauguration. So, hey -o. Um, anyway, the, the list of, of reviews for this goes on and on. There's so much love for this book. Elizabeth Gilbert, um, Nick Offerman, um, Isaac Mizrahi. It is, uh, there's a lot of um, appreciation for this book and um, it's very important. It's very, very moving, I have to say. He built his first boat in the year that and launched it on the anniversary of his father's death. Anyway. That's a little unoffen by Trent Presler. We're starting to run out of time. I could go on about this, but I can't. But I can't because I don't have the time. Okay, next. Speaking of books that have so much that it would take all day to tell you how much love and support. So this is Reunion Beach. Um, as many of you know, Dorothy Benton Frank, beloved author, passed away in the fall of 2019. And she was just so larger than life that um, a lot of close friends and colleagues and uh, family channeled their love of her and admiration and grief into stories about her life to celebrate her and um, poems and essays, short stories are in here. Um, it's so many great, great authors, um, including Adriana Trigiani wrote a story about Dorothea and Pat Conway, Conroy meeting in heaven for a meal. Um, and uh, his, uh, his um, widow, Cassandra King Conroy, she wrote a story about television television special commemorating the 25th anniversary of a Low Country Chef's hit cooking show coming together. So those are a few of the stories, but also Marjorie Wentworth, who is the former poet laureate of South Carolina, she wrote a poem for each of Dorothea's books. Um, Dorothea's daughter is writing the foreword and her son is writing the afterward. There are three essays from Dot in there as well. Um, Ellen Hildebrand, who dedicated her last book to Do Dorothea, uh, wrote something, and the title, Reunion Beach, was what her next book was going to be called after she went to her high school reunion, so this is an ode to that as well. Um, there's a lot of love coming out of these pages and recipes and everything, but it's perfect for reading at the beach, too. These stories will open you up to other South Carolina writers and learn more about them, but also just to revere a legend that Dorothea Benton Frank was. So that's reading in Beach. American Portrait. Um, so um, p this month, PBS is running a series of documentaries called American Portrait to celebrate their 50th anniversary. At the end of 2019, they created an American Portrait website. It's pbs.org slash American Portrait. You can Google it, it'll come right up. And it's where Americans could post images and answers to sentence completion exercises. Um, our book draws from the best of those 14,000 posts to showcase who we are as a country and how we survived such a tumultuous year. There are four colors uh, photographs throughout with no single author or commentary, just Americans explaining who they are in their own words and pictures. It's so moving and in a time of deep cultural division, here's a book that celebrates what unites us and shows us uh, that what we share is much more significant than our differences. I have to say, I was up until three o'clock in the morning last night because I'm crazy. I could not stop watching these. They are amazing. They were on PBS and there's, it's just, they do these pieces about um, profiles of people who are working 
and and what everybody goes through, what everybody's lives are like. You know, that everybody is just doing this on their own, participating on their own. You can go to the website and and participate yourself. And um, it's just, it's glorious. I mean, really, when you think about it, it's, it's very eye-opening and you find out, as I said, that there are, are more uh, similarities than differences among all of us. It's really beautiful. Too, too, not enough time to go into, but trust me, just go to the website and it's, you'll get quite the eyeful. Here are a few samples right here. Just a glorious, beautiful book. Um, eh, it's just wonderful. It's just absolutely wonderful. I encourage you to go and check this out. PBS.org slash American um, uh, portrait, American portrait. Um, okay, I can go on about it, but we have no time. Next. Life on the Line by Emma Goldberg. So Emma is a New York Times reporter and she started after, when everything started happening in March, she reported on all of these doctoral, these students going in, they're medical students and they had match day. They were gonna see where they're going for their residencies. And all of a sudden, now they're taking Hippocratic Oath on Zoom and they're shoved into these New York hospitals to figure it out after all of the craziness started. Um, and so she expands on all of that reporting in this book offering up close portrait uh, portraits of everyone in those fields and the professionals that are facing all these challenges daily. And so um, it's a really uh, beautiful story, but really unforgettable uh, depiction of crisis. And it kind of is unfolding in, in real time, unfortunately. Um, and I have a friend who went through this and I can't imagine. So it's very nice to have this as a nice archive of what to do and maybe fit help in the future. So that's Life on the Line in the Goldberg. Okay. Where You Are Is Not Who You Are by Ursula Burns. An incredible person. Uh, on, she's a trailblazer. She was the first Black CEO of a Fortune 500 company when in 2009 she became the CEO of Xerox. And this, and she just accomplished so much in her life and she continues to. And this is part memoir, part cultural critique where, you know, she is telling her story. You know, she grew up in Manhattan's Lower East Side in tenement housing. She had a single mother who she credits for all of her success. She instilled, you know, that there were no limits to what she could do, what Ursula could do. And so she kind of takes us through her life and also reflects on her time, you know, amongst a male white dominated industry, upper level management and how she navigated that. It's a really fascinating story of, again, a, a really incredible woman. Uh, this is coming June 15th. That's Where You Are Is Not Who You Are by Ursula Burns. The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie Jaku. Uh, I will speak uh, not a lot about this because I wanna show you this video, but I first just wanna tell you that this is an uplifting memoir um, about a Holocaust survivor um, who pays tribute to those who were lost by telling his story, sharing his, wit his wisdom and living his best possible life um, this is, um, this man is a hundred years old, alive and well, and, um, it, it's just the most powerful. He gave a Ted talk that is just so powerful that, um, I just want to go straight to it. This is a universal story of hope and love. Um, let's just go to the video, Grace, please. I was lucky enough, managed to escape what became known as the Death March and I hid in a forest alone for many months before I was found by the American army. But I'm standing here today happy man who enjoys life with a wonderful wife and a beautiful family. I do not hate anyone. Hate is a disease which may destroy your enemy but will also destroy you in the process. I am doing everything. I am doing everything I can to make this world a better place for everyone. And I implore you all to do your best too. Uh, you can see the TED Talk if you go to Edelweiss. You can see the um, that that file is there. I uh, I, I highly recommend that you um, that you watch it. it. You won't forget it. You won't forget him. Um, uh, Heather Morris, who wrote uh, the Tattooist of Auschwitz, 
says uh, a beautifully told poignant story that should become required reading. Thank you, Eddie, for sharing your story of courage, resilience, kindness, and love. Your book is our tonic, our medicine, our hope for living the happiest life we can. It's The Happiest Man on Earth by Eddie J. Cruz. Next. And more inspiring lives. If we had time, God, we'd love to tell you about all of these books. But please put, give us a call or email us if you have any questions. But again, do check all of these out. Um, they're, they're really wonderful in and of themselves. Everybody here has a wonderful story to tell. And some funny books, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, just very quickly, this is uh, an oral history of the office by Brian Baumgartner and Ben Silverman. This is the official or oral history book of the beloved show, The Office. I think it's the ultimate cozy feel good show. Uh, just legions of passionate fans uh, to let an, left an indelible mark on our culture. Uh, and this is by, uh, again, Brian, who is best known for pay, playing Kevin Malone in the show, and then Ben Silverman, who is a visionary producer behind the show. So uh, you'll get things you've never seen before. Just a fantastic book. We're so excited. I know I am coming in June. Miss Butterworth and the Mad Baron by Julia Quinn and Violet Charles. So you've watched all of Bridgerton. What are you going to do now? Well, you can dive into all of Julia's backlist and this really fun new graphic novel. It's the first graphic novel. Um, she's got an illustrator and it's her sister. So that's super exciting. And in the seventh Bridgerton novel, um, it's in his kiss. We Hyacinth read an excerpt of Miss Butterworth to Lady Danbury. And so this is a a reimagining of that character who is sprinkled throughout Julia's books in a graphic novel form. So everybody is so excited for this. If you can go to the next slide, you can see a couple of spreads. Um, isn't it gorgeous? And these are on Edelweiss too, if you wanna dive in and read them. Um, this is one we're very, very excited about and it's just a madcap tale and fun and whimsical. Um, but that is Miss Butterworth and the Mad Bear. And if you're a Mets fan, you understand why this book is here. So many ways to lose. I know they're amazing, but sometimes they're amazingly bad, but that's okay. That's the point of the book. They can lose very well. So Devin Gordon is a seasoned sports journalist and this is a, uh, a very funny and provocative and very affectionate look at the best worst team in sports, quote unquote. Uh, he shows that there's a difference between being bad and being gifted at losing. And this distinction holds the key to understanding the true magic of the New York Mets. Each chapter tells the story of the franchise's history through the prism of the Mets singular gift. It's really about what it means to be a sports fan. There are great interviews in here with, uh, you know, Mets figures like Mike Piazza, Ron Darling, uh, Mickey Sasser, and longtime Mets broadcaster, Gary Cohen. And of course, longtime suffering Mets fan, Jimmy Kimmel. This is very funny, very tongue in cheek, and, uh, but also some really good, you know, inside, inside baseball. So there we go. So many ways to lose. And I think we're 257. Oh, go ahead. We're, we're getting close. We can do it. Okay. You're going to be hearing a lot about this book. I do want to let you know that we are publishing Quentin Tarantino's first work of fiction. This is an adaptation of his uh, award-winning movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But it's not just a transcription of the, the, show, the movie. It's a, a wholly unique novel. It's going to be a mass market paperback as an homage to Quentin's obsession with 1970s paperbacks. Uh, with new storylines, new endings, new characters, and uh, just a huge publishing event. So we're so, so excited about this book. It's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood by Quentin Tarantino, coming end of June. More funny books. Uh, there's a very funny art, well, not funny, but it's an art history coloring book, which you think is really cool. And Sarah Ferguson, Sarah Ferguson has a book out. You need to read that. Here are some interior spreads from the coloring book, ooh la la. And three cook cookbooks, Donna, I don't know if we have time because you have to do wrap up. We'll just keep talking until he tells us to stop. Okay, she's not saying anything. Chris, one time. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. So Everyone's Table by Gregory Gourdet. He's a beloved top chef, a star who traveled to Portland uh, as he was getting sober and became really obsessed with wellness and uh, self-care. And this is his cookbook that, uh, uses just very flavorful, filling, healthy dishes and recipes uh, with 200 recipes, full color images. He's just one of the preeminent, preeminent cooks, rising star, big deal for us coming in May. 
Eat to Beat Depression and Anxiety by Dr. Drew Ramsey. Um, so this is anxiety and depression affect 58 million people in the US alone. And this is a new way to look at that and see what you put in your mouth affects your mental health and state of mind. And um, actually this author, nutritional psychiatry is really a relatively new field. So he's one of its best known communicators and practitioners. And it's an easy to implement proven strategies to help you move, improve your mood and emotional wellness. And Come On Over by Jeff Morrow. Uh, this, this is um, a, uh, a um, Chicago-based Food Network star. So he's, his, uh, he's been a co-host of a four-time Emmy-nominated Kitchen on Food Network since 2014. Everybody who's into the Food Network knows him and loves him. He's a comedian. He's very funny. He's very engaging. And this is a Chicago-based star, and he's offering uh, recipes for family and, and uh, gatherings. And he's this Italian-American childhood where his mother's voice would be on the phone saying, come on over. I don't know. There's something very fun about this book, and uh, I can't wait to dive in. And he just has a very winning, engaging uh, personality and really knows how to connect with people. So I think this is going to have a, I think this is going to be just dripping in love. That's Come On Over by Jeff Morrow. And more cookbooks. Oh my God, Nigella Lawson, look at that. Who doesn't want to stick a spoon in that? Yes, indeed. Um, just again, check them all out. They're all here on the, on the handouts. Next. And some more resources about, um, you know, just how the pandemic has, um, you know, sort of, it's, it, it's, it's awakened all of us in many ways. So here are some resources that may be helpful to you. And these, finally. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. If you haven't read it, you will read it, you will love it, and you will just, I don't know, it, you'll just, it's just like being wrapped up in a warm blanket. It's the most beautiful book. We have all these lovely books, Nancy Pearl's book, The Writer's Library. These are just fun, fun escapist and lovely and heartwarming reads, and we, we really love them, and we want you to know about them if you don't already. And that's it. Oh my God, we did it. Put your, put your cameras back on, you guys. Da, 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 302, not bad for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you, are, you are spectacular. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia, Laney, and Christopher. That was very powerful. Uh, cheers and laughs. Um, so tomorrow, all the attendees will receive an email containing links to today's slide presentation, that precious title list a certificate of completion, congratulations, and video recording. For more about Booklist webinars, be sure to visit booklistonline.com slash webinars, where you can view archives of past webinars and register for upcoming ones like those that you see here. If you haven't already, please check out the Booklist Reader. This is our blog on our website, where Booklist contributors post daily about all things books and library land. Uh, keep an eye on the Booklist Reader for our editor's choice and a great roll call of the Women in Focus titles from 2020. While you're perusing Booklist online, uh, be sure to check out Book Links, a quarterly supplement to Booklist, perfect for educators and school librarians. It is now freely available to all. That is of good news. Um, free to everyone to start reading. Just click the cover image located within the left column of your homepage and find out all about book links if you're not already a reader. Are you not yet a subscriber to Booklist? Pair the page by page reading experience of print with the convenience of online access at booklistonline.com. You can lock in the print, online, digital and archive access, which is a big deal by taking advantage of this special webinar offer to get all this for only $75 um, and support librarians and ALA. Thank you for joining us for this very special webinar. And one more big thank you to our sponsor, the wonderful Library Love Fest team at HarperCollins. Stay well, everyone. See you next time. This concludes today's webinar. <laughs>